For years, environmental health scientists have been likened to Chicken Little, shouting from the rooftops that the sky is falling. Now the evidence is piling up, and it's showing that when it comes to our health, Chicken Little might be right. Rates of a whole series of diseases in children are rising. Rates of asthma have increased threefold in the last 30 years. The two principal types of childhood cancer, which are leukemia and brain cancer, have both increased by about 40%. Rates of autism, attention deficit disorder, and other learning disabilities are up. Certain birth defects have more than doubled. So the question comes up, what's causing this? Dr. Philip Landrigan saw the effects of toxic chemicals on children when he was a pediatric resident in the 1960s and is one of the world's leading experts on environmental health. A number of chemical companies over the years have knowingly sold hazardous products. We knew that lead paint could cause poisoning in children as early as 1910, more than 100 years ago, and yet the lead industry continued to sell lead paint in this country until they were legally banned from doing so in 1976, and they're still selling lead paint overseas where they can get away with it. Toxic chemical exposure can have multiple effects on children's health. That means lower IQ scores, more behavioral problems like ADHD, even autism, obesity in childhood, also asthma, and possibly cancer. Professor Pereira should know. She is the founder of the Columbia Center for Children's Environmental Health, where her team has been studying the effects of toxic chemicals and environmental pollutants on children. We have documented so many different exposures to flame retardants, to phthalates, bisphenol A, air pollutants, organophosphate pesticides, chemicals that shouldn't be in the bodies of newborn children and yet they are. So we have a lot of tips for people about how they can avoid toxic chemical exposures, but sometimes you can't actually do anything about it. Professor Tracy Woodruff is a former EPA scientist who now leads the University of California San Francisco's program on reproductive health and the environment. I had had a kid in the 1970s. The only way that I could prevent lead exposure in the air to my child is for the government to get lead out of gasoline. Starting in 1976, we took lead out of gasoline. Blood lead levels in American children dropped by 95 percent. Uh, the incidence of childhood lead poisoning dropped by more than 90 percent. The effects of toxic chemicals, scientists say, begin before children are born. Children are exquisitely sensitive to many of these toxic exposures, and that's because the brain and other systems are developing very, very quickly. And during this period, it, you can almost think about a choreography, a dance that is very tightly programmed. And any chemical or, or other toxic exposure that gets in there can disrupt this dance, and the consequences can be very long-lasting. Up next, Mike Wallace follows the money behind corporate safety claims in Money Talks.